your turn. Now we're back. We're, we uh, finished part one at the end of chapter five, and this is day 53. Part two. Part two, and this is Linda Nartisan reading. I'm glad you joined us in for part two. Leviticus, chapter, I mean, pardon me, Numbers, what the Numbers are. Numbers chapter 6. We read about the, the rules of the Leviticus people for taking care of the temple. We read about how a man can tell if his wife's been unfaithful when God's going to be with her. So, go on in and read with us. Come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, just sit down with this. There's actually a chair here. The Lord said to Moses, this is about the Nazarites, speak to the Israelites. And say to them, if a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of separation to the Lord, as a Nazarite, he must abstain from wine and other fermented drink, and must not drink vinegar made from wine or from other fermented drink. He must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins as long as he is a Nazarite. He must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even seeds or skin. During the entire period of his vow of separation, no razor may be used on his head. He must be holy until the period of his separation to the Lord is over. He must let the hair of his head grow long. Throughout the period of his separation to the Lord, he must not go near a dead body, even if his own father or mother or brother or sister died. He must not make himself ceremonially unclean on account of them because the symbol of his separation to God is on his head. Throughout the period of his separation, he is consecrated to the Lord. This is Francisco, and he's going to read for okay. Right there. If someone dies suddenly in his presence, thus defiling the hair he has dedicated, he must, he must shave his head on the day of his cleansing, the seventh day. Then on the eighth day, he must bring two doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The priest is to offer one as a sin offering and the other one as a burnt offering to make atonement for him because he sinned by being in the presence of the dead body. That same day he is to consecrate his head. He must dedicate himself to the Lord for the period of separation and must bring a year old male lamb as a guilt offering. The previous days do not count because he became defiled during the separation. Now this is the law for the Nazarite when the period of his separation is over. He is to be brought to the entrance to the tent of meeting. There is to be present his offerings to the Lord. A year old ma male lamb without a defect or burnt offering, uh -oh, for a burnt offering. A year old ewe lamb without a defect for a sin offering, a ram without defect for a fellowship offering, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, and a basket of bread made with the, without yeast, cakes made of fine flour mixed with oil, and wafers spread with oil. Okay, verse 16. The priest is to present them before the Lord and make the sin offering and the burnt offering. He is to present the basket of unleavened bread and is to sacrifice the ram as a fellowship offering to the Lord, together with its grain offering and drink offering. Then at the entrance to the tent of meeting, the Nazarite must shave off his hair that he dedicated. He is to take the hair and put it on the fire that is under the sacrifice of the fellowship offering. After the Nazarite has shaved off the hair of his dedication, the priest is to put it in his hands, a boiled sh uh, shoulder of the ram, and a cake and a wafer from the basket, both made without yeast. Then the priest shall then wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. They are holy and belong to the priest, together with the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. And after that, the Nazarite may drink wine. Verse 21. This is the law of the Nazarite, who vows his offering to the Lord in accordance with his separation, in addition to whatever else he can afford. He must fulfill the vow he has made according to the law of the Nazarite. The Priestly Blessing. 
Verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. And that's the end of chapter 6. I hear them say that blessing. They say it on TV and in movies. And now we turn to Mark. Mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 20. I don't that shit. Yeah, I was really beating this Bible. I think by the time we're done our year yeah. reading, we're going to have to buy a new Bible. Four. Yeah. yeah. The parable of the sour. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got in, into a boat and sat in, sat in it out on the lake. While all people were along the shore and the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had, not, they had no root. Other seed fell on, among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so what they did not be, so they did not bear grain. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying thirty, sixty, or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said, "He who has ears to hear, let him hear." When he was alone. The twelve and the others around him asked him about asked him about the parables. He told them, "The secret of the king, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may never, so that they, they may ever, they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven." How far do I go? 20. Okay. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where this word is sown. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others are like seeds sown on rocky places, hearing the word at once, receiving it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others are like seeds sown among thorns. They hear the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things comes in and chokes the word, making it unfruitful. Others are like seed sown on good soil. They hear the word, they accept it, and they produce a crop 30, and I think it's uh, 60 or even 100 times what was sown. And that's the end of today's reading. That word, that has ink on it, I couldn't read it, so I guess. <laughs> Yeah, 30, 60, 90, oh, 100. And, and uh, thank you for joining us again. And uh, I guess I'll get you to pray us up. Why me? Why not? Amen. Father in heaven, we once again thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that as we've read it and we've heard it, that now, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to us through it. Put that seed into us so that we may understand you in a greater way. We pray for each and every one that listens today. We pray a blessing upon them as as uh, Aaron was told what to say. The blessing, we should go back and read it, but the book scrolls down. But anyhow, Lord, we pray your blessing upon each and every one that hears your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good night. See you tomorrow.
Let's you go back and, and get that card and get it out so we can say the blessing to you. People. Huh? Oh yes, that's great too. I'm not a priest. Anyhow, so.